yeah, I want to go over uh, go over a uh, a pretty cool pedal. Now this pedal is out of production, but it, it can be found pretty easily on Reverb.com. This is a uh, a distortion gain pedal called the ooh called the hey now that's enough of that. I'm gonna be talking about a pedal called the Keeley Stahlhammer. This is a distortion pedal, really good distortion pedal, especially for horns. Um, simple, but sounds great. And uh, this is uh, going to be a real fun one to go over. So what we have is a uh, just a five knob pedal, and there's one switch that you cannot see on the side. So you have your distortion knob on the top left, which is really just how much grit and dirt and, and distorted sound you're gonna make. You have the level on the right, which is just how loud it is coming out. And then you have your three EQ options, bass, mid, and treble. Um, on the side, you have a gain switch that you cannot see. And this gain switch uh, lets you choose between two different modes. One is the tube amp crunch, uh, which um, will show you uh, a little bit more of an analog sound, a little bit more tube, kind of warm, uh, less saturated sound. This is one where uh, the clipping circuit is uh, a little less aggressive. And then you have the lead mode. The, uh, this has higher gain and more saturation, a little bit more of a solid state sound than, an anal than a tube sound. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a really cool pedal. So let's, let's, let's see how it sounds. So the reason that this pedal is so good for horns is A, because it's a little bit more Marshall-esque uh, in, its, in its EQ profile, meaning that it is mimicking a Marshall amplifier, which means that the mids and the bass uh, frequencies are much more uh, up front than the treble frequencies. This is good because the higher frequencies being more up front will more likely lead to feedback when you're using a conventional microphone. So when you're using a pedal like this, it's really good to, to, to be aware that you have a little bit more ability to, to play around with it because the low end uh, and the mids are going to be more emphasized. That being said, it's also good because it has three EQ knobs, three EQ parameters that you can control, which in turn will even further enhance your ability to deal with feedback because you can EQ out the, uh, the upper register likely uh, that is causing feedback if it exists. So what I want to do is I want to play for you on uh, the different settings with different EQs so you can hear it and then we'll, uh, we'll mess around with it in a little bit of uh, in, in some context. Uh, so let's see. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it on and we're going to you see you can hear the little the little washy fuzzy sound that means it's on so right now all of the eq knobs are at noon the volume is at noon and the distortion is noon i have the switch on the side in the up position up this way um which is the more uh tube-esque less hyper saturated way of uh of playing so check it out everything's at noon so you can see that this sounds really nice like this has a, a warm kind of fuzzy thing going on so i'm just going to uh show you kind of the full spectrum of the uh, of the distortion knob, so I'm starting at zero. I'm gonna play a note and just tw uh, slowly twist it all the way up to max, so you can hear what that sounds like. So you can hear at its extreme settings, the max sounds pretty intense. <laughs>
Yeah, very cool. All right, so I'm going to back off the distortion a little bit to about 2 o'clock, and I'm going to mess with the EQ. So I'm going to bring the bass up to 3 o'clock and move everything else back to like 10.30 so we can hear what the bass-heavy part of this pedal can sound like. <laughs> this thing sounds. Um, so that's a lot of bass. Let's turn the bass down to about 10.30 and bring the mids up to 3 o'clock. Man, that sounds great. Um, that has a really tight warm, uh, pleasant feel to it, I'm going to dial the mids back to 1030 and now bring the treble up to 3 o'clock. That's probably going to sound a little more aggressive, a little more sharp, uh, not in terms of how in tune I am, but uh, and how aggressively it hits your ears. <laughs> So as you can hear, right, the uh, the sound with the treble up is a little more volatile. You can hear my breath a little bit more, which is a high frequency sound, and you can tell um, after you've done it enough times that this is a sound that's going to cause feedback with a conventional microphone. This one right here. <laughs> That's intense, which is fine, but that can get a little scary. So I'm going to turn the treble back down a little bit. My favorite sound so far was with everything at uh, 10.30, but the mids at 3 o'clock. I'm going to max out the mids and see what that is and put everything else to 9 o'clock. Um, everything else meaning the EQ. Bass at 9, treble at 9, mids at max. <laughs> So it's, it's lost a little bit of body, so let's bring the bass up to 11.30 again. And now we need a little bit more definition, so let's bring the treble up maybe to noon. So with the treble at noon and the bass at, at 10.30, uh, I think the mids is uh, the mids knob is too high at max, so let's bring it back to two o'clock. So we have bass at ten thirty, mids at two o'clock, treble at noon. Let's see what that sounds like. So th this to me sounds really good. Now, one thing to note with a pedal like this, and all gain pedals uh, that that do distortion with this much EQ control. This is going to react differently for everyone, depending on your tone, on the instrument you play, and the frequencies that are uh, highlighted and, and most apparent in that instrument. So, I just want everybody to be aware that my settings aren't necessarily going to be the settings that work for you. What matters is that you are going to have settings that will work for you, which means you have to try a lot of different uh, parameters in different places. So I found something that I like here, right? Where my distortion is at two o'clock, my mids are at two o'clock, treble is at noon, and bass is at 10.30. Let's see what happens when I turn the distortion down. See if we can get a little bit more subtle overdrive sound, not so much distortion. So now the, distor the, uh, the distortion knob is at 10. What does this sound like? <laughs> So you can hear that it is not nearly as aggressive, and what you can actually start to do is shape your tone, which could be cool. So if you want to use this as something that isn't distortion, but to change your tone, you can do that. So I'm going to take the settings I just had and put the treble to max. Let's see what this sounds like. Gives it a little bit more definition and a little bit more um, push. So this, this pedal can do a lot with various amounts of distortion and gain. 
Uh, I'm gonna do the opposite now. I'm going to max out the gain. Let's see what this sounds like. So with the treble at noon, the mids at 2.30, and the bass at 11 or 10.30, and then the distortion maxed out, you start to lose that definition that you had before when the distortion was at two o'clock. So you can see that there are diminishing returns depending on what you want as the distortion goes up. Now, let's go back to the uh, sound that we liked. Distortion at 2.30, bass at uh, 10.30, mids at two, and treble at noon. <laughs> And so, and so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take that switch on the side that we've already forgotten about and I'm going to change it from the more uh, warm tube distortion to the more saturated solid state distortion. Same settings as before, but now listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> So what you're hearing is something that is a little bit more even and consistent in the way that it's saturating and, and breaking up. So let's bring that down a little bit. Let's bring the distortion back down to 11 o'clock and see what that sounds like with this solid state distortion. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. That's like a nice velvety sound. So I could go on all day with this pedal, but there's a lot that this pedal can do as you, as you can hear. Uh, but I think maybe we want to hear it in context. So I'm going to play this little Jay Dilla groove and I'm going to show you how this can sound with this more velvety sound um, in a more chill context. Let's see how that goes. So you can hear that that, that that can actually work in that context. Um, of course, you can always go crazy if you want to uh, and, you know, play this kind of sound in, uh, in a rock context, right? <laughs> Keeley Stallhammer, really, really versatile distortion pedal, very useful for horns because it doesn't force you to contend with, uh, with a lack of EQ control and therefore a lot more feedback. Check out the Stallhammer. It is no longer in production, but it is definitely findable on reverb and other types of uh, second, uh, secondhand sellers. It's pretty great. Uh, I heavily recommend it. I highly recommend it. Um, check it out. You will enjoy it.